All right, lads and lasses, today we're diving headfirst into the fascinating world of Chinese naval power. Specifically, we're taking a closer look at their shiny new toy, the Fujian Type 003 aircraft carrier. This beast is absolutely bristling with J-15 fighter jets powered by massive steam turbines. And if the rumors are true, it even boasts those fancy electromagnetic catapults. It's a statement piece, no doubt, a symbol of China's growing military might. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? The Fujian, for all its impressive specs and imposing presence, has a few hurdles to clear before it can truly flex its muscles on the open ocean. We're not talking about some minor teething problems here, oh no, these are big complex issues that could take years to iron out. So grab a cuppa, settle in, and let's break down the three major problems facing China's new flagship carrier. From training enough qualified pilots to mastering the intricacies of carrier tactics, we'll explore the challenges ahead and what they mean for China's naval ambitions. Right then, let's talk pilots. You see, having a hulking great aircraft carrier is one thing, but without skilled pilots to fly those jets, it's just an expensive floating runway. And that's the first big hurdle for the Fujian. China needs to train a whole heap of pilots, and not just any pilots, mind you. We're talking top-notch, highly skilled aviators who can handle the demanding world of carrier operations. Now, training pilots is a time-consuming and expensive process for any country, but for China, it's even trickier. See, they're playing catch-up in the carrier game. They haven't been doing this as long as countries like the US, so they don't have the same pool of experienced instructors to draw from. It's like trying to learn how to bake a souffle from someone who's only ever made toast. And then there, there's the whole issue of specialized training. Carrier landings, my friends, are not for the faint of heart. It's one of the most difficult maneuvers in aviation, and it requires nerves of steel and pinpoint accuracy. Pilots need to nail that landing on a constantly moving runway, often in rough seas and challenging weather conditions. It takes years of rigorous training to master this, and China's still building up that expertise. They're making progress, don't get me wrong. They've been putting their pilots through their paces, running simulations, conducting training exercises. But it's a numbers game as well. The Fujian can carry a lot of aircraft, which means they need a lot of pilots. It's a big ask, and it's going to take time to build up that level of experience and expertise. Think about it like this. Imagine you've got a brand new sports car, top of the line, all the bells and whistles. But you've only ever driven a rusty old pickup truck before. Sure, you can technically drive the sports car, but you're not going to be pushing it to its limits, are you? You need time to learn the ropes, to get comfortable with the handling, to really master the machine. That's where China's at with its carrier pilots. They've got the shiny new toy, but they're still learning how to really make it sing. And it's not just about individual skill either. Carrier operations are all about teamwork, about coordinating multiple aircraft in a fast-paced, high-pressure environment. So while China's making strides in its pilot training programs, it's a long road ahead. They need to churn out experienced pilots, build up a deep pool of instructors, and master the art of carrier-based teamwork. It's a tall order, but one they'll need to fill if they want the Fujian to reach its full potential. Now let's talk about the Fujian's party piece. The thing that really makes it stand out from the crowd, its electromagnetic catapult launch system. This is where things get really interesting, because China's gone all in on some seriously cutting-edge technology here. They've skipped a generation, leapfrogging over the older steam-powered catapults used by most carriers and going straight for the electromagnetic option. It's a bold move, and on paper, it offers some serious advantages. Electromagnetic catapults are like the Teslas of the carrier world. They're smoother, more efficient, and can launch heavier aircraft with greater frequency. It's like upgrading from a rickety old roller coaster to a state-of-the-art magnetic levitation train. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? This technology is still relatively new and untested in a real-world carrier environment. The U.S. Navy has been wrestling with its own electromagnetic catapult system on the USS Gerald R. Ford, and it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, to say the least. See, these systems are incredibly complex. We're talking about massive amounts of electricity being channeled with pinpoint precision to propel aircraft to take off speed in a matter of seconds. It's like trying to orchestrate a lightning bolt, and even the slightest hiccup can throw the whole system out of whack. So, China's taking a bit of a gamble here. 
They're betting big on this new technology, and it remains to be seen how well it will perform under pressure. They need to put it through its paces, run countless test launches, iron out any kinks, and ensure it's reliable enough for the rigors of carrier operations. Think of it like this. Imagine you're a chef, and you've just invested in a fancy new induction cooktop. It's all singing, all dancing, promises to cook your food faster and more evenly than ever before. But it's also a completely different beast to your old gas stove. You need to learn how to use it properly, adjust your cooking times, and figure out all the nuances before you can confidently whip up a Michelin star meal. That's the challenge facing China's Navy with the Fujian's electromagnetic catapults. They've got this impressive new tool, but they need to master it before they can truly unleash its full potential. It's a steep learning curve, and only time will tell if they can climb it successfully. The stakes are high too. A malfunctioning catapult system could have disastrous consequences, potentially damaging aircraft or even injuring personnel. It's a risk China's willing to take, but it's a calculated one. They know the potential rewards are huge, but they also know they need to tread carefully and get this right. So while the electromagnetic catapults are a tantalizing glimpse into the future of naval aviation, they also represent a significant unknown for China's Navy. It's a bold bet on cutting-edge technology, and only time will tell if it pays off. So we've got the pilots, we've got the fancy new launch system, but there's one more crucial piece of the puzzle carrier tactics. This is where things get really complex, because operating a modern aircraft carrier isn't just about launching planes and hoping for the best. It's like a giant floating game of chess, with each move requiring careful planning, coordination, and a deep understanding of naval warfare. And this is where China's relative inexperience in carrier operations comes into play. They've been studying hard, learning from other navies, but there's no substitute for real-world experience. It's like trying to learn how to play poker by reading books. You might know the rules, but you'll get eaten alive by seasoned players. Carrier tactics involve a whole host of complex maneuvers and strategies. It's about positioning your carrier strike group effectively, coordinating air defense, launching offensive strikes, and anticipating your opponent's moves. It's a delicate dance of offense and defense, and it takes years of training and experience to master. Think of it like this. Imagine you've got a brand new smartphone, packed with all the latest apps and features. You can technically use it to make calls and send texts, but you're not even scratching the surface of what it can do. You need to spend time exploring its capabilities, learning how to use all the different functions, and figuring out how to integrate it into your life. That's the challenge facing China's Navy with the Fujian. They've got this powerful new tool at their disposal, but they're still learning how to use it effectively in a tactical sense. They need to develop their own doctrines, refine their strategies, and build up the experience necessary to operate a carrier strike group effectively in a contested environment. It's not just about the ships and planes either. It's about the people, the communication, the decision-making processes. It's about building a cohesive team that can work together seamlessly under pressure. And this takes time. It takes trial and error, exercises, simulations, and real-world deployments. It takes learning from mistakes, adapting to new challenges, and constantly striving for improvement. It's a journey, not a destination, and China's just at the beginning of its carrier warfare journey. So, while the Fujian represents a major step forward for China's naval ambitions, it's important to remember that true naval power goes far beyond just having a big ship. It's about mastering the complex chessboard of carrier warfare, and that's a challenge that will take China many years to overcome. So there you have it, lads and lasses, the three big problems facing China's new Fujian aircraft carrier. It's a beast of a ship, no doubt, packed with cutting-edge technology and the potential to shake things up in the Asia-Pacific region. But as we've seen, it's not just about having a shiny new toy. It's about the people, the training, the tactics, and the experience. China's got a long way to go before it can truly challenge the likes of the U.S. Navy in terms of carrier operations. But they're learning fast, they're investing heavily, and they're determined to become a major naval power. The Fujian is a symbol of that ambition, a statement to the world that China's here to stay. It'll be fascinating to see how the Fujian's story unfolds in the coming years. Will they overcome these challenges? Will they master the art of carrier warfare? 
Only time will tell.